Uh, we welcome HBU men's head basketball coach Ron Cottrell and 16 years served as the athletic director at HBU and now the assistant athletic director. One of the longest coaching tenures, one of the most successful collegiate basketball head coaches in the NCAA. Uh, Ron has risen to the challenge of every level in which HBU has competed since he began his services in 1990. And you look so young, man. <laughs> I was very young back at that time, but yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me today. Well, we're delighted. I mean, t a long tenure and a lot of 452 wins. Tell me the secret of Ron Cottrell. Well, I think I've been uh, very blessed to have a supportive administration at HBU. Uh, the, the, to even imagine the fact that I've been here as long as I have and only had two presidents uh, is pretty astounding and that two is. presidents that were terrifically supportive of not only us as coaches and, and what we do on the, the court or the field of competition, but supportive of who we are and how we uh, bring in young men and women to our programs and, and really try to help mentor them. And, and so I've been so blessed to be surrounded by, by administration and assistant coaches and people all over our campus that have made this job so much easier than it, it could be easily if, if things weren't so supportive. And uh, give us your background. Are you a Texan from here? I was I, I was born in Arkansas and, and really kind of bounced back and forth. It's kind of funny. People in Texas think I'm from Arkansas and people from Arkansas think I'm from Texas. Uh, <laughs> I, I was born that. in Magnolia, Arkansas. Uh -huh. uh, spent my early uh, childhood there. Bounced around Louisiana a little bit and then went to junior high and high school here in Houston. Uh, went to Fondren Junior High at the time, now middle school, and then Westbury High School, uh, but then went to, back to the University of Arkansas for college, and, and then after school was able to uh, be an assistant coach at the University of Arkansas for Nolan Richardson. And, and then when the job opened here and was able to uh, be fortunate enough to get the position, uh, came, came back to home, as, as I would call it, and, and have not left and, and have joined every, enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, 1990, 27 years. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And your family, tell us about your family. Uh, Jackie, my wife, we've been married for since 1987. And uh, uh, we met each other while we were in school at the, at the U of A. And she's an Arkansas girl from Cabot, Arkansas. And we have two lovely daughters. One is a grad student here at HBU now. I got her undergrad here and now is, is, is in graduate school and, and uh, working for me and on our staff here in the basketball program. Uh, that's Scotland. And then Sydney Ann is my younger daughter. She is a sophomore athletically, a junior academically at, at A&M Corpus Christi, actually in the Southland Conference competing against HBU. So that's kind of interesting at times. Uh, but she's down there at A&M Corpus Christi, loves it, uh, pre-med major down there and, and uh, really doing well. You know, what a beautiful story that you have of tenure and family. And you are a surrogate father to some of these athletes aren't yeah. you yeah it's, it's certainly part of the job there's no doubt about that certainly when especially when you recruit uh, so many guys from all over the country uh, you get adopted as, as a family for those guys and my wife is very much involved in that as well uh, to kind of take that gap up uh, for them that, that when mom and dad aren't close by uh, to be able to kind of help continue to mentor them and and help them grow and understanding what's going on in college and how to get through uh, the whole college process and, and grow to be young men. And uh, I take that very seriously, but I, I have to say that I have some assistant coaches that do an unbelievable job mm -hmm. as well. And, and really we do it all as a family together. And uh, we really believe in, in family. And you know that's, that's a word that's talked about a lot in college athletics, but I really think that we really do live it out with the way we work with our guys uh, as a whole staff and a whole community within our program. Um, I've had one assistant that's been with me f from the very beginning. Wow. Uh, and it started out as a student here and, and a manager for us and then became an assistant for me. has been with me all the way through. Stephen Key and his wife's an HBU grad and, and he as well. So, um, and now I've had a number of other assistants who've come through. It's currently Judd Kenny and Keith Berard have been with me for a number of years. And I think together we kind of do this thing. And, and certainly, I, you know, I'm the head coach, but it certainly isn't me alone by any stretch. It is a, it's a group effort to, to be able to mentor these guys and see them grow as, as young men. And as you uh, scout for talent and 
recruit students? What, what's the story you tell them about the HBU Huskies? Well, probably the first thing I say about HBU is it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. we, we look for young men of character, young men who, who not only can survive here academically and culturally, but can thrive at HBU. That is, that is very important to us as a basketball program is to find young men who can graduate from HBU, but also love and understand the culture of HBU and who we are as a Christian campus. And it uh, doesn't mean that every young man comes here as a Christian, but it, it's a, it, we do look for young men who are a high character. And certainly we've had a, young, a number of young men come to know the Lord while they've been in our program. And so uh, it, is, it is the first thing we talk about is, look, you're going to be held to a standard on and off the court that maybe you wouldn't be at some other institutions. But we think that's what sets us apart as an institution, as a basketball program, is we want young men of character, solid academically, uh, and obviously can compete at the, visual, the, the Division One level. Mm -hmm. And so that, that makes it uh, an interesting task to go out and recruit because you have to really do your homework and find the right men for, for HBU. And I think we've been pretty successful at doing that. Division One puts it in a whole different ball game, doesn't it? No doubt, no yeah. doubt. It's exciting, it's fun. Uh, you're competing against the very best in the country every day you step on the court. And, and uh, as coaches, as competitors, as, as players, that's what you want to do. And, and so it, it is fun. We're talking to head basketball coach uh, Ron Cottrell about the HBU Husky. Steve Maniachi, the director of athletics, says he is well loved by his players and we're fortunate to have a man of Ron's caliber leading our men's basketball program. Those are nice words. Yeah, those are nice words from a man who knows. Yeah, Steve and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, I was the athletic director at the time that Steve came on board at HBU, and, and I hired him as the associate AD. And uh, with kind of in mind that we were going to at some point in time do some other things with the program, I knew that being athletic director and head men's basketball coach was going to be difficult as the transition to Division One was going, going on. And so... Uh, brought Steve in to help with that process. He had a, a wealth of experience over at Rice and, mm -hmm. and uh, knew that he, because he knew Houston and, and kind of knew who we were as a, as a department and as a university, that he would fit in really well. And, and then that was an easy transition over to him be, becoming the athletic director and me kind of stepping over to the, the associate athletic director's position and, and just kind of really being someone to kind of help him and, and, and he can lean on his for advice and, and let him do the day-to-day -day dirty work of, of being an AD, the, the, the nuts and bolts of, of administering the department, uh, but still be able to be there and just be a friend and be able to help as I can. Yeah. Let me just transpose myself. First, I'm a parent and I've got a son uh, and, uh, or, and I'm looking at basketball and I'm mm -hmm. looking at HBU. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I we you know the world we live in. It's got so many challenges on young yeah. people and all the moral yeah. corrosion. Uh, what what would you say to a parent that's got a talented uh, child that's considering HBU? Well, the first thing I would say is is the stability that we lend because of the number of years that we've been at HBU is very important. Uh, too often you see young men sign. Uh, with a coach and at some point in time during their career they go through one or two or maybe three coaches and that becomes a difficult sure. transition when you're going into different staffs that maybe have different philosophies and different ways of doing things and and you aren't the guy that they recruited and, and so they're looking at different types of players and that becomes a, a difficult college time for athletes in that in that position the fact that we have stability here and have had the support that we've had from our administration really is something that we can lean on when we go out and recruit and talk to parents about, you know, you're going to have a staff that's going to be here and going to be able to mentor your young man all the way through the college time. Um, you know, I think that's the first thing. They, they want to know that they're going to be taken care of, that, mm -hmm. that their son is, is in a position where people really do care about them. And that's the thing that we talk to, to, care, to parents about more than anything else. We may not have the, the flashiest facilities uh, in the conference, not yet. certainly. Not yet, not yet. And certainly we're working on that, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. Uh, but we have people who are gonna build relationships with their son and really gonna help them grow uh, as young men. And so I think that's the first thing that we talk about, more than anything else, about relationships uh, with their son. And then we talk about educational experiences and what HBU is like and the culture of HBU and how they're gonna be able to fit in and grow academically, athletically, and spiritually. 
Uh, and then we talk about the level of play and how they're going to be able to, to, to play at the, the highest level and, and really enjoy their time playing. And we play a style of basketball that's pretty fun for guys to want to play. We get the ball up and down the court. We led the, the conference in scoring last year. And, and so the, wow. you know, young men like that. And, and so I think the parents feel like we're not going to try to fit them into a mold and, and certainly a philosophy that doesn't fit their young man. And, and so we want to be able to give them that, that freedom to be able to play basketball and, and use the gifts that they were given. You know, character lessons and having a coach that emulates that is just priceless today. Well, I, I think know, so. There's a lot of talented players that are unfortunately morally bankrupt or they have horrific character problems. And we see it, you know, every week in the news, you see it and I see it. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt you see a lot of it in the news. I think what's, what's overlooked is there are so many kids you know, the small percentage is what gets published. Sure, of course. There are so many people who are doing it right, who are mm -hmm. doing the right things and really going about it the right way and are model student athletes and terrific coaches. Unfortunately, in today's world, we see all the bad things that go on, and that's right. what's getting pub publicized sure. too many times. Uh, but I think that's our job is to, is to try to do it the right way and give these guys great experiences and, and the foundation to be able to go on with their lives. And Division One. so if I'm a, a, an athlete and I'm thinking about HBU, mm -hmm. what, what, what is the opportunity for me if I can make the team? Well, there's 351 Division One programs uh, around the country. We're in the Southland Conference, 13 uh, athletic programs in the Southland Conference. And, and certainly it is a terrific uh, level of basketball. We're going to be playing the, one of the toughest schedules in the country. I think last year our non-conference schedule was second in the in the country as far as strength of schedule wow. this year's schedule i think will be very very similar so you're going to be challenged if you want to know what it's going to be like to be a division one college athlete you're going to find out real quick when you step on the court against a michigan state like we are this year or indiana like we did last year or virginia tech or, or vanderbilt or whoever you want to name so the fact that you're going to be playing against the very very best in the country that's division one athletics and and that's what you're going to experience when you come to hbu Ron Cottrell is our guest today, the head basketball coach at HBU Huskies. Um, tell me about the, the style that you have adopted as a coach in basketball. Well, I think first thing people need to know is if they know anything about the history of college basketball, Nolan Richardson should ring a bell with a lot of people sure. in the basketball world. Um, he played a style of basketball that had a particular term that they call it 40 minutes of and I turned it into 40 minutes of heck at HBU uh, because I didn't think it would really go over well with the term that we used at Arkansas. But, but certainly that style really is, is, is what we adopted when we were first came here and certainly have continued uh, with some modifications, understanding that we're not going to quite have the athlete that maybe we had at Arkansas when we were going to the Final Four with, with some really high-level NBA players. But... I love playing that style of basketball. I love being able to get up and down the floor and, and really let our guys play open offensively, but then hold them to, to a really stringent uh, level of defensive intensity and, and really get after people defensively and, and, uh, and really pressure and, and play a fun style that's going to be open. And, and I think it's great for fans to come watch play. Yeah. Now, how many are on the squad and what does it take to be a first stringer? Well, there's 13 scholarship players that we typically have two or three or this year four walk-ons. Uh, so we're at 17, which is a really high number on our team. Mm -hmm. uh, the recruiting process to, to be a part of our program is, is you know, they, they say that recruiting is not a, a science. It's not an exact science, certainly by any stretch, but it certainly is something that we spend a lot of time on as coaches. And we go out and find the very best uh, all over the country. And so it's a very... Uh, difficult process to get into uh, a Division One program and be recruited by a Division One coach, uh, and understand that we we have different levels of academic standards at HBU than than the vast majority of Division One schools, uh, because we do expect our guys to be successful academically, and HBU is a rigorous school. It is, and so we have to really go and find the right guys. Uh, as I was talking about at the very beginning, just not just the character part and, the, and uh, understanding the culture, but the guys who can can do well here academically. Uh, and, and so it's really a, a, a difficult thing to be a, a Division One college athlete at a private academic Christian institution like ours. And that's that's what makes our job sometimes challenging, but I think in a lot of ways fun. 
uh, because we, we need to go out and find guys who fit that mold, so to speak. But when we get those guys here, we're really working with high quality young men. Uh, so it's, it's, it's difficult to go out and, and, and find the people that we want at HBU, but I wouldn't trade for anything. Now, how many, how many games are there in a season? 30 or so, and then you get into conference tournament and postseason play and all those kinds of things. But 30 is, is generally the, the regular season. And who are you playing in this season? Uh, we start out with Providence up in Rhode Island, very first game of the year. Then we have a home opener against Arlington Baptist here. And then we go to Belmont and play in a tournament. And then we play Virginia Tech and Michigan State and Vanderbilt, Oklahoma State. Uh, we've got Texas State coming here uh, this year, and we'll go to their place next year. We, we play at UTSA this year, uh, and they'll come here the following year. Uh, we have played Rice the last few years, not playing not on the schedule this year, but we hope to get them back on our schedule soon. Uh, and then we get into conference play, and, and obviously our conference, uh, when you talk about Stephen F. Austin and Lamar and Sam Houston State and a <laughs> Corpus Christi, it's a tough, tough conference, and uh, we're excited about what's going to happen in conference play this year. Uh, memorable games, memorable seasons, memorable athletes. I have a few. <laughs> give me a some. Few. Give me some stories. Yeah, I hate to, I hate to point out particular players because I never would want to to uh, subtract from anyone because we've had a number of really, really great players here, and you know the 2 3 team. Uh, certainly stands out. Went 31 and three and finished number one in the country on the NAI level, and and so that's a, that's certainly a team that really stands out. But we had a team two years later that had a very similar record, and we finished the year because of injuries with only eight guys. And so we may not have been the number one team in the country, but we finished I think 12th or 13th that year. But because of the adversity they had gone through, those eight guys are very uh, very much etched in my mind because they really fought through things to be able to win a conference championship and go to the national tournament and things like that. Uh, very first team that I ever coached here. Uh, a lot of freshmen that we brought in when we started the program and, and started from scratch, won seven games the first year. We weren't a very good ball club, to be honest with you, on the court. But the next year we won 14 games. And the next year we won 17 games. And in their senior year we won 21 games. And so those guys who really set the foundation for us back in the early 90s, uh, and so those guys are very memorable to me uh, because they really came in and, and, and established what HBU is all about from the very beginning. And then the guys who helped us make the transition to Division I, very much the same type of thing as we went through in the early 90s, we went through in the, in the early 2000s with those guys making that transition. And so those guys, while the wins may not have been as good as some teams that we've had, Certainly, the, the, their, their commitment to HBU and seeing the foundation being laid uh, at this level, it, it really is etched in my mind. Well, was it a big adjustment to go to Division I? Bigger than you can ever imagine. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we had great teams. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Our yeah. NEI teams, there are some, of the, some of the better NEI teams we had yeah. could very easily have competed in the Southland Conference. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, we had some, some very high-powered teams that really could do some special things. But to build a program on the Division I level with, with the recruiting year in and year out and the scheduling that we have to play and the types of teams that you play in, play against every single game on the Division I level is certainly uh, uh, awe-inspiring. And, and, and sometimes you sit back and go, you know, how exactly are we going to get this done? But I think if you've seen our team grow as we've gotten into the Southland Conference, uh, we've been able to step up to that challenge. Much like that team I talked about in the early 90s, they went from 7 to 14 to 17 to 21 wins. We went from our first year in the Southland four years ago, finishing 13th, dead last in the league. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the last, last team. We, then we, the next year we finished seventh. And then the next year we finished fourth. And then last year we finished second in one game from winning the conference championship. So we've been able to kind of go through that process again. Now, and what is the preparation for the, the game that you're really trying to instill in the players? Mentally, physically, spiritually, the whole bit. Certainly the, the preparation for an individual game, we have a lot of prep time that we use for an opponent uh, with scouting reports and all the film that watching that we do and all that. But to you know, putting together of a team is, is to me, the, the, the most fun thing of, of what I do. Finding guys who mesh together and have the, the, the personalities to make up the chemistry you've got to, to, to have to be able to win at this level 
is fun. I mean, to me, that's enjoyable to, because we aren't looking for the 13 best players that we can possibly get. And people might not understand that. We're looking for the 13 guys who play together the best. Yes. And so you have to have a system and an understanding of who you are as an institution and who you are as a program to find the right 13 guys to put together to make your program have the best opportunity to be successful. So that's the first thing you do is, is how are we going to put together different types of players, different types of positions on the floor and, and skill sets and personalities, uh, you know, on and off the court. And how are they going to, I mean, even to the point of who lives with who over in the apartments or the dorms. And so that they get along and, they, and they, they fit together as a team. Those are all things that we think about as coaches. And so that's I, things you may not think about. Sure. You know, uh, people think I oh, just roll it up and you, and you play basketball and, and you may practice a few days a week. It's, it, there's a lot that goes into this. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. And when you think about um, those that excel, uh, they have talent, but then they move to that peak performance level. Do you see that, that transition of these players and putting it together? Is it gradual? Is it immediate? It depends. And, and sometimes it depends on position. Right. I, I think as, as basketball coaches, we typically see point guards make that transition to college athletics and college basketball. They've been leaders their whole life. They played the point guard position, much like a quarterback on a football team right. or whatever. And so they typically make that transition a little bit quicker. Uh, but everybody's different even in that regard. But post guys typically take a little bit longer to make that transition because they, they have gone their whole lives with being growing at an at a, at a interesting rate. I mean, we got a 6'11 post guy right now, Josh Ibarra, who's one of the best post players in our league, who it took a little while for Josh to grow into, what does it take for me to be successful in this position? A lot of times, folks guys have inferiority complexes because they are the biggest guy in their class or whatever, and and so it takes them a little while to overcome that. The personalities of post guys is very different than the personalities of a point guard, uh, and so you have to really take into account how do these guys all fit together and how quickly are they going to grow. We're talking to head basketball coach Ron Cottrell here at. HBU and just really want to zero back in on how faith. I mean, faith means something to you. You embrace it. Mm -hmm. And um, the confessional statement of HBU is Jesus Christ is Lord. And we all unap unapologetically embrace it. And yet God has graced our campus with people that maybe don't even understand that when they come. Yeah. And I love that wide open gate. Yeah. You know, I was a pot smoking kind of heck raising kid <laughs> and before somebody introduced me to faith in Christ. How has faith, the instilling and maturing these young men uh, during the season, how do you do that? Well, I, first of all, I think I, I grew up in a Christian home and, 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 and came to know the Lord at a young age and, and really have, have lived the Christian life in, in many ways, in, in ebbs and flows, obviously, but, but uh, most of my adult life. And, and so uh, I think we as, as Christians on our campus, the main thing that we do is we love our guys. That's the first thing I do. I, I never try to beat them over the head with, with our faith. Sure. Uh, I never demand that they do something that, that's outside of their, their comfort zone to the point where they, they, it, it turns them off. That, yeah, I, I challenge them at times about being involved in who they are and what they're going to do and, and, and how, they, how they treat themselves, how they treat others, uh, and how they respond to situations in a, in a, in a context as a Christian. As he, and even a non-Christian that, that may make them a little uncomfortable at times, but I'm never going to force my faith or our faith as an institution down their throat. Uh, we've had guys of all faiths in our program. Sure. And I think the number one thing that we can do is plant the seed, and the seed to me is, is loving on them. And, and making them feel comfortable with who they are and who we are and letting them know we really care about them as people, number one, and, and kind of who they are inside that skin not what they do on, on the basketball court or in the, in the classroom, but who are you inside your own body and, and uh, what type of person are you? And I think, you know, having, you know, my wife and I are very, very devoted to our church and very involved in our church and, and, and do a lot of things around our church, but, but this is really in a lot of ways our ministry. And, mm, and we've, we have felt for a number of years that, that we're put in this position. I, you know, I had someone say to me a long time ago that, you know, coaches 
uh, particularly coaches on, on a Christian campus, it, it's much like a minister. It, mm -hmm. it, it's a calling. It's not, just, it's not just a job. It's really a calling to be in a position that I'm in. We are so blessed to have you, Coach Cottrell. We think about your years here and all the lives you've impacted. It's such, a, such an honor to have you a part of the HBU team. I, I want to just ask you before I let you go. Okay. You know, we all have mentors, and this John Wooden, I've got to tell <laughs> you, although I'm probably not the basketball buff you are, I just love the way he lived his yeah. life. And uh, I recently uh, listened to a podcast uh, where Tony Robbins was interviewing Coach Wooden uh, when he was alive. And, you know, after his wife died, all those letters he put by the mm -hmm. pillow. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting, you know, the who's who came through him, but they remember so many character lessons yeah. he taught them. Uh, who's your mentor? What did Wooden mean to you? What do others, as you look around? Well, I think that's a hard question for me to answer with one or two people. There's so many different people who shape who I am. Um, you know, I grew up in College Park Baptist Church uh, as a junior high and high school student, right across the street, right across Beach Nut from the campus. Wow. And uh, Cecil Sewell was our pastor, and, uh -huh. and Cecil was a terrific pastor and friend and and someone I really looked up to in, in those young year, younger years and and really felt as though I had a connection with him and and really he led me towards kind of where I was heading another young another person who was a uh, actually a music minister there at College Park was Leroy Krolchek. Leroy worked at HB for a time after that and and uh, we spent a lot of time together and really he helped me grow as a Christian when I was younger. Uh, and then from a basketball point of view, Nolan Richardson is, is my mentor for, on the court. But really the person who led me into coaching was, was Eddie Sutton. Eddie mm. Sutton was at Arkansas at that time. Yeah. Coach Sutton's had his own demons along the way, but, but, but what an unbelievable coach and someone who really cared about his players and really uh, helped them grow. And I, I watched him throughout my college days. I was fortunate enough to develop a relationship with him uh, while I was doing some TV work and things like that in Fayetteville and and he really let me inside his program in a lot of ways and I understood what it meant to be a coach. That title carries something very special Yes. to be a coach. Uh, that, that When someone calls you coach, that's not just any title and, and that, that means something about how you treat people and how you mentor people and and so I, you know there's been a number of people who've helped me along in that process in different phases of my life well coach we're excited about the hbu huskies we do want to hit the website hbuhuskies.com to learn more about hbu athletics 17 division one programs mm -hmm. in the athletic department of houston baptist university and uh just some final thoughts. I mean, what, what, what has been, I mean, looking at these 20, I mean, you look so fresh. <laughs> I thought you might walk in here and look a little more haggard after 27 years, but you look healthy. They must be running you down the court. But what is some of the, what, what, what has been the, the memorable look back of these 27 well, years? Well, I think the first thing I would say is, is it has never been a job. It has been something that I've enjoyed getting up. I don't, I rarely ever have to set my alarm. I get up in the morning ready to go and, and excited about what, we're, what comes next and, and what we're gonna do next to make this team, this program, uh, you know, make the next step. And, and you know, coaching is a puzzle and, and, and each year the puzzle changes mm -hmm. and you have to figure out what are the right pieces and how do you put them together correctly. And, and that's what I kind of enjoy. I enjoy putting that puzzle together, whether it's recruiting or on the court tactically or, or staff wise or whatever it is, I enjoy those processes. And uh, I think that to me, for, to have an institution that first of all I love, and I really believe in who we are as an institution and to be embraced by the community of HBU as much as I have been over the years and my family has been throughout all the years uh, is, is really fun for me. Uh, I enjoy that every day. It's never been a job to me. Uh, and I think that's what thrives me, you know, pushes me and, and makes me thrive to be our best. Well, we, we are certainly thrilled that you came by today, and we want to invite you to check out the different 
uh, 17 Division I athletic programs at Houston Baptist University and of course HBU basketball. I love that shirt you have on. Thanks for Thank coming you. by. Thank you. Thanks for having me.